By now you managed to raise twenty nine crore. Yeah, mm. we are a music tech platform, okay. which is uh, trying to solve a broken journey in the music value chain in this country. Fifteen thousand plus students right now. You know, when you start scaling up as a platform, you have to first make sure there is a product market fit. By virtue of doing what we're doing on Artem Originals, potentially in four to five years time, we could become the largest owners of independent music IPs. A talent needs to be groomed to become a performer. Artist management companies they need to learn to tell an artist. what gig to not take right amount of money to invest into marketing mm. is the art that one is to understand we are building ai on top of it to enable the process of practicing for a learner mm. post class capital will come only when you have the right mm. vision right problem statement that you are trying to solve with right set of team members mm. co-founders and you have minimal viable product is has the founder got some pedigree in that space to be able to pull it off today almost 50% of total spend yeah. by every brand is on digital why can't music form mm. a very integral part of the brand spend there is no right age or time to do this there's to be extremely compelling reason for you to drop everything and do it Welcome Ashish thank you for joining us on Music Mafil India My pleasure So RTM is um, an online music learning platform uh, you guys started in 2021 and your seed round was led by Sonu Nigam uh, where you raised uh, $750,000 which yeah. is what like Five and a half crore. Yeah, yeah. And by now you managed to raise three point seven million dollars, which is what a twenty nine crore. Yeah, around twenty nine, twenty seven, twenty eight crore. Twenty eight. Yeah. I mean, look at depends on the rate of the currency that part of time It actually. Does. Okay, so uh, can you give us a ballpark figure of how many students so far? Yeah, we have more than fifteen thousand plus students right now. Wow. From every part of the world. every part of the world yeah largely all these students are indian expatriate population almost 50% of our total base right now mm -hmm. is from outside india so indians residing in different parts of the country what ratio would you say that is um, around 50 50 50 is outside india 50 is from india india right and in india what all cities yeah we have we have students from almost all prominent cities right delhi bombay pune calcutta down mm. south chennai bangalore and how are you faring in tier 2 tier 3 cities uh, pretty good in fact uh, we have uh, i mean we see more demand mm -hmm. than the supply that you can provide them right now uh -huh. we have largely focused on um, tier 1 cities so far we were providing one is to one classes uh, in india mm -hmm. but to kids in india we'll also start one is to three okay uh, where one teacher has to three students out there mm. to penetrate further in tier 2 and tier 3 cities uh, Hmm. of india is we that for the cost. price conscious yeah. uh, consumers yeah. so that's there are two parts to it one is um, of course there are two indias value conscious and price conscious mm -hmm. right to value conscious they are okay to study in a one in one environment mm -hmm. the little um, uh, premium price uh, points mm -hmm. but for the um, one is to three students there are price conscious but there are a lot of kids who are willing to study in a so it's they then to feel a sense of community out there hmm. right? right i would love to learn with two other kids Yeah. In the same class, and I want to see how they're doing and stuff, mm -hmm. etc. And maybe for me, it gets boring when I'm learning just one-on-one -on -one with yeah. my teacher, or a one-hour one-hour class might be a little longer for me. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy to do. This is especially in uh, younger students. Kids, yeah, six to twelve, six to twelve, largely. You know, so that's why it's only kids in India for which we'll provide, or we've started providing one is to three already. Okay, we are in a pilot phase, and we'll roll out that soon. Mm -hmm. um and um you know while there is a lot of demand from tier 2 to tier 3 we have not had the sort of chance to go all out and um promote and market ourselves mm. because um you know when you start scaling up as a as a platform uh -huh. you have to first make sure there is a product market fit we provide every learner a mm. demo class yeah. with the academic counselor academic mm. expert at rn we have finite numbers of people right yeah so when you have too much of demand right we want to like hmm. control the quality of learners who are coming to us and therefore we are focused on one is to one hmm. in uh, tier one cities so far what exactly would you say is the problem that rtm is trying to solve and that's why we don't call ourselves a music education platform hmm. we are a music tech platform oh okay which is uh, trying to solve a broken 
journey in the music value chain in this country how so so there are three stages of you know this whole value chain you mm. learn yeah you create once you've learned yeah and then you go and distribute and monetize hmm. your efforts out there most of the platforms providing performance arts after you've learned you have you are left to fend for yourself you want to create something but you don't know where to call who to collaborate with hmm uh you know if you are a vocal artist you want hmm. a composer a writer etc etc um and then you also need um assistance in terms of finance to mm. be able to create that kind of content right okay even if you figured out how to create mm. you didn't know how to distribute mm. slash monetize it oh. right yeah. so the whole ecosystem was a little broken journey was broken so actually at artium we are a music tech company mm. which streamlines the journey mm. of a potential musician from learning mm. to creation to distribution slash monetization right so this entire vertical yeah. uh, tech platform is what we have built where we first train the learners hmm. uh, and then give them opportunity to create content through a platform called artim originals uh huh and then using that they can create content using our resources and our sets of people and all and then we also help them distribute and monetize by reaching right. to a larger audience right so Uh, would you say somewhere you're also uh, going in the same waters as uh, a label see i wouldn't call that we are going into the label territory because labels actually uh, pick up a talent and then probably whatever is required in the journey of the talent is yeah. what they do hmm. but literally from learning from scratch mm -hmm. is what they don't do right. but yes by virtue of creating a lot of independent music with our talent which is a combination of mm. our learners and mm. by the way we have 220 odd teachers in this country hmm. and most of the teachers are performers yeah they have been uh, performing uh, in different uh, areas of this country hmm. uh, in different genres of music mm -hmm. and all these guys are creators hmm. and so even for them there's a hook because we provide them also the platform called artim originals right by virtue of doing what we're doing on artim originals potentially in 4 to 5 years time hmm. we could become the largest owners of independent music ips in this country hmm So tell us how are you handling the distribution part of this So right now of course last year we had partnered with Warner Music mm -hmm. uh, through a partner called Global Music Junction mm -hmm. um, you know who who saw the potential of what our team was building nurturing mm -hmm. and nourishing talent mm -hmm. um and therefore they came and partnered with us and said you know what we'll co-create content we'll invest with you guys mm -hmm. and that's when the Artim Originals took birth and we distribute all that we are creating using Warner's ecosystem mm -hmm. through their CMS on YouTube and their partnership on Spotify and all other platforms okay um we'll continue to do it that way but at some point in time we might create our own distribution network with using any of the partners today see mm -hmm. the the real story is not how you distribute mm -hmm. you can use any of these CMSs or the partnerships out there the real challenge is how do you market your products mm -hmm. what kind of content you create what kind of mm -hmm. niche you creating uh, creating yeah. with the talents out there what kind of opportunities you are giving to talents a talent needs to be groomed to become a performer absolutely yeah. right and that process is very very interesting mm. right I'll, which are which few of the talent agencies are trying to do most of the artist management companies that we have and there some of them are really good mm -hmm. no doubt about it but they need to learn to tell an artist what gig to not take yeah most of them are busy just getting them gigs of yeah. random kinds Yeah, whatever. So there's a process yeah. in this whole thing. So mm. I wouldn't say distribution is um, uh, rocket science. There are a lot of platforms like Believe. I mean, TuneCore yeah. is a part of it. Correct. We have uh, Orchard and many others actually. Mm -hmm. You know, in grooves and all. And most of these labels also have direct relationship with the uh, yeah. sort of um, uh, platforms. But marketing of products mm. under different IPs. You know, right. creating interesting IPs around it, getting brands on board mm. to spend money on these uh, IPs mm. along with what you're building out there. and then pushing it in a right manner mm. using the right amount of money to invest into marketing mm. is the art that one is to understand and right then, so there is uh, education there is the artist um, grooming original creation, uh, creation yeah. of their ip and uh, then there is the distribution, distribution yeah. Is there anyone else who is doing this to your knowledge? I don't think there is any vertical platform focusing on all three aspects at one shot. There are institutions and academies and platforms who are providing music education. Hmm. And there are um, uh, creator platforms who are allowing the creators to come on board. Yeah. And 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 help them um, in distribution. There are hmm. hardcore distribution platforms, but there is no one entity which mm -hmm. is taking to the journey of a learner from a learner 
to a creator to a distributor right. and that's why we are proud of what we're building in the vertical music tech space so would you say that you are hoping to find more of the professional musician compared to how other uh, education platforms are actually focusing more on hobbies, hobbies? Yeah. yeah no so let's uh, accept one fact of life hmm. whether one wants to learn as a hobby yeah or with professional aspirations they always like to learn from a platform which is true to its art form Hmm. right i wouldn't i wouldn't like to go and sign up with a tel- uh, with a teacher um, who is casual about his teaching hmm. right yeah. so we were very clear from day one we had to be gold standard in in our approach mm-hmm. and that's why we created probably india's first structured music education program hmm. focusing on performance orientation we are not saying that we are meant only for professionals mm-hmm. we are saying we are a serious music learning platform mm-hmm. where hobbyists can take a different path hmm. uh professionals who are aspirants to become pro- professionals can take a different path okay right and therefore our training program also is designed in a manner the teachers are trained hmm. to be more learner centric more aptitude driven rather than teaching the classes in in those boxes right Correct. i have one hour is finished i have taught you this next day yeah. we'll do something else hmm. your uh, aptitude versus my aptitude could be different in that sense hmm. so you will take a different journey i will take a different journey for the same curriculum hmm you s- mentioned gold standard uh, in music education uh, can you explain how did you perceive as where the indian music uh, education standard was and what you felt was missing and how are you uh, addressing that see i will never try and demean any of the things which are existing <laughs> we just thought we could try and perfect some of the things which are missing out there mm-hmm. so for example um, any of the indian classical music uh, systems that 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 exist today mm-hmm. has been little rigid like archaic traditional in in certain approach mm-hmm. like um, um, and a little unstructured in that sense and why i say that carnatic is still largely structured but mm-hmm. hindustani classical is driven by gharanas mm-hmm. you know and every gharana has different style of approaching the same thing out there mm-hmm. um, most of the curriculums of course there are um, interesting certificate driven curriculums available out there but they are unstructured and sort of infinite in that sense hmm right so what we thought was there's a lack of a performance driven approach if someone who is new to the whole art form and wanted to learn music yeah um their first port of call was to someone who has learned from someone yes right whereas if i want to mba i know i am sir the best if i want to do engineering i know iit is the best hmm why do we not have an institution in india which claims to be the trinity and the berkeley's and the royal college of music Hmm. um from that perspective right yeah so the idea is to be that brand uh, which is synonymous to some of the global brands coming out of emerging out of india a brand from india which hmm. exports indian classical music in a in a in a structured environment hmm. uh, where the certification program of this pro- this particular uh, curriculum could also have the same kind of weightage hmm. that the trinity has in india how are you taking care of that so we've taken baby steps towards it we didn't claim to be from day one a certified program Uh-huh. but we are chatted a curriculum in a manner that slowly and steadily will start getting the whole um, uh, fql and all agencies to come mm. and you know evaluate our curriculum mm. and you could have ucas points mm. associated with that which allows an indian kid to learn indian classical music and still get a cambridge board or ib board uh, sort of uh, admissions globally right, right. so yeah. the way it, the way it happens through trinity or rock school of music or whatever chat uh-huh. so you've expressed that um, you aspire to use the uh, data around human judgment to create ai supported systems hmm. to help um, music learning online globally hmm. is that already happening so in bits and parts a lot of people are trying it out mm-hmm. i always say that ai will um, uh, evangelize this space largely over a period of time you just cannot in music especially in art forms you cannot simply bring in ai elements and change the way it was happening earlier yeah. but you can always use ai led tools hmm. to support the process for example i have finished my class and i have got original track mm-hmm. on which i have to practice or what my teacher taught me in the class yeah. in form of sargam so bandi show whatever etc has come to me on my dashboard which is happens in rtm mm-hmm. uh, for me hmm. to practice yeah. but when i'm practicing hmm. i have no way to figure out until i use my own judgment yeah how close i am to what my teacher had taught 
Hmm. Now this is where AI can play a very in- interesting role, and we are building tools around it. We have a practice studio which has hmm. got all the widgets available inside. We are building AI on top of it to enable the process of practicing for a learner hmm. post class. Would it also give feedback I- immediate feedback? So yeah, AI will give you real time feedback as to how. good or bad you are on surtal mm. pitch etc on various parameters out there personally i would like to have an ai platform which you are working on which could go do voice assessment as well mm. like i don't know if you have seen when you go to asic store there are machines out there where you put in a leg it tells you based on your uh, dimensions of the leg mm-hmm. which pairs of shoes in asic suits you mm. there is no tool which allows me to assess my voice the voice tonality voice quality etc etc available right now yeah uh, many times we end up taking wrong courses make wrong choices professionally as well as uh, mm. at the learning level yeah we wo- mm. we are in the process of working in in that direction using ai mm. and um, the question that you asked me initially mm. about why we have not ventured to tier 2 tier 3 series yet mm. and i said there is uh, every time we go out there and market ourselves there's huge amount of learners who would like to come and take demos from us mm-hmm. but because we provide all our demos live using academic experts mm. There are only finite people I have to handle finite dem- number of demos. Yeah. If I want to to do one lakh free live classes for my learners tomorrow, hmm. I can't have ten thousand people doing it for us, right? Hmm. And that's when the AI can take over. Today, right. as we speak, more than hundred thousand uh, demo classes have been conducted using our team's platform in last twenty four months. Hmm. You can model the data hmm. based on the learnings of hundred thousand demos is good enough to give you what kind of questions get asked, hmm. what kind of communication happens, what kind of interaction happens. and then use uh, the ai that you're using for pitch recognition right yeah. built into that to understand how good or bad the person is so this uh, data collection and this building of such an ai has it already begun at rtm yes yes you start working on that uh, it will take couple of quarters for us to execute because you can't go wrong with something like this mm. technically i always see this you should no, not and never try to do something which is gimmicky mm. with performance arts mm If you want to be true to your art form, you will be largely close to what you are trying to achieve, hmm. with five to ten percent aberration here and there. That gap can be filled by humans. Uh, you saw that there is no one company that is doing this vertical integration of educate, uh, help create, uh, and distribute and market. Yeah. Right. So, say someone. Uh, identifies a void be it education or technology or niche service whatever in the music space what should the next steps be i think one needs to have a holistic mm. vision mm. and perseverance and persistence to stay focused in what they want to achieve mm. right and we always say that whatever we are doing we are speaking aloud right now it means yeah. the secret sauce is out of what we are trying to build yeah. which means anyone else can come and start working on that yeah. but the idea is to stay ahead of the game but to people who are trying to achieve this mm. three things that i always say mm. uh, most of and last two and a half three years have seen emergence of a lot of hobby classes hobby platforms absolutely yeah uh, they were mm. horizontal mm. right so first of all when you are trying to create something around performance arts mm. you have to first build a very deep vertical platform mm. pick up one art form solve that problem using technology efficiently mm. to deliver an experience so so have a problem to solve hmm. and have a vision absolutely are, yeah mm. yeah yeah and and then you need to have a right team right. to pull that off because mm. um, capital comes last ah a lot of people start think mere paas idea hai and i i need money I to, need do money to do this actually yeah. i think capital will come only when you have the right mm. vision mm-hmm. right problem statement that you are trying to solve yeah with right sort of team members mm. co-founders um, key key team members and stuff etc mm-hmm. and you have a, a what we call as mvp minimal viable product mm-hmm. something that you built to demonstrate that you can do it proof of concept because yeah because ideas are diamond dozen mm. it's execution plan execution that you can have thing. so therefore when somebody is evaluating mm. you from the other side yeah we look at your ability to, uh, first of all a great idea Mm. and i think there's a large market to capture mm. right from an investor point of view then the people who are behind this idea you would have heard about a term called product market fit yes there's okay. something called as founder market fit oh okay right huh. is has the founder got some pedigree in that space to be able to pull it off right so your background does Ma- matter does matter and then the mm. third thing is the founder's ability to put together a brilliant team mm. using technology first approach mm. right um otherwise um, you know you can have a, an idea of starting an academy 
in a brick and mortar business mm. but they are not scalable and therefore it, you can fall flat right. at some point in time itself so yeah yeah i mean that's what i think at what point does a uh, research come in it's a, it's a parallel process mm. so you of course cannot put out an idea and mvp until there's enough research about it mm. and that's a part of the process like yeah. when i when i go and pitch an idea to an mm. investor mm. he would definitely want data backed idea right mm-hmm. data comes from research yeah so you should have done your market research mm. it can be basic research to begin with mm. but then it has to be com- combined with some of the studies that you would have seen from ernst and young and goldman uh, goldman and all those guys who have who have who've created some research work right yeah. use that do your own research put together in a in a sort of a format of a ppt mm. or a deck um, yeah. uh, and then uh, then then go out uh, to talk about it you mentioned background Yeah. the profile of the founder so let's take your example what has your background been so my first relevant mm-hmm. background in music space mm-hmm. was the fact that i was born to a mother mm-hmm. who was visharad hindustani classical but um, uh, like many fathers my father to believed music education is a waste of time if you're not a lawyer engineer doctor ca you're worth nothing in life mm-hmm. i could never learn music but i had this musical genes in my life because of my mom so i kept singing and performing in college and all just out of hobby mm. fortunately i got a chance to work in the industry first with hangama mm-hmm. i was uh, heading india operations for content acquisition for hangama so got chance to work with lot of labels mm-hmm. hangama was and remains to be one of the largest uh, um, players in media space mm-hmm. um, you know distributing indian content not only in india but globally that uh-huh. was the uh, play out then and then uh, from there i got a, um, an opportunity to work with universal music as head of head of south asia for new business development and digital mm. uh, business and i think uh, there was a time when there was a point of inflection mm. in digital revolution from the music label perspective right yeah. and i spent 4 4 and a half years there mm. uh, got exposed to the way music business was happening in india and globally w- what's your education mean i did my mca mm. from kg somaya institute of management oh wow Okay. So, <laughs> I'm a techie by profession, uh-huh. but hated coding. Hmm. To move, so move to techno commercial role the day I got a chance, hmm. and from then onwards, so from techno commercial to um, business development to P and L driven approach hmm. to heading businesses, and that's been the journey. After Universal, I joined a music streaming service called Dingana, hmm. which was competition to Gana and Savan those days. Great product from Valley, uh-huh. a focus on Indian consumers. um dingana got acquired by rdo yeah which was a global streaming service and then i think rdo got acquired by pandora electron and then i moved to a p from private equity firm mm-hmm. where i was heading um, a business mm-hmm. which was way ahead of its time called fluence mm-hmm. fluence was uh, influence and network around celebrities mm-hmm. we had signed up with mr bachchan salman khan priyanka chopra sachin tendulkar rajnikanth mohan lal mm-hmm. you name a celebrity in this india in this country we launched them on social media taught them the art of monetization using digital assets Hmm. audio video hmm. blogging gaming solution you know very interesting stuff so, so you had the network um, through these various roles uh, you had uh, uh, gained an understanding on from the label side of things and then uh, through your last um, stint uh, in pe uh, in the pe firm um, you also got a sense of the celebrities yeah and i mean we, that one aspect uh, stands out about rtm can you can we go into that yeah yeah mm. yeah you're talking about all the maestros that we have signed at yeah. at rtm right yeah see um, like i said since our vision was to create india's first performance driven structured education program mm-hmm. it is a very ambitious vision mm. right yeah and um, music or any performance arts is very pious to people's mind Mm. right you just can't go and claim something mm. without having a sort of a background yeah. now my my background in music industry technically means nothing to a a user on the other side yes for me to claim something like that mm. so we were very clear from day one that we need to put together an academic board of its mm. own accord mm. where we can get some of the maestros of the industries to come together mm. so we approached um, of course sonu nigam sonu yeah. ji has been uh, almost like my elder brother Mm. I have worked with him for last twelve, twelve, thirteen years. Had mm. the chance to work very closely with him. Uh, he loved the vision that I was building, and he said, "I have my, you have my blessings. Mm. Go ahead and build it." Uh, okay. We spoke to Shubham Mudgal. We spoke to Aruna Ji. We spoke to K S mm. Chitra Ji, uh, Louis Banks, Raju Singh, mm. you know, Anish Pradhan, 
all the yeah. guys out there and almost all of them bought into this vision and our our request to them was to come on board as faculty heads mm-hmm. of various faculties which means they they would they would be involved in creating the curriculum mm-hmm. um also facilitate the process of induction of teachers mm-hmm. into that curriculum as to why the curriculum was designed the way it was designed so the teachers can get an get a hang of the whole thought process behind it and then uh, conduct master classes with the learners from time to time all of these guys pretty much came together Mm. Uh, to be part of this vision with us and that became almost like uh, a moat for us very nice tell tell me about your partners yes i have two co-founders mm-hmm. uh, vivek raicha and nitya sudhir yeah uh-huh. um, vivek um, is a veteran in media operator yeah. and investor by profession and now is a co-founder looks after marketing and strategy for us uh, nitya is a finance expert mm. um, spent 22 years in uh, finance and wealth management Mm. uh looks after the finance hr she yeah. also last stint was in a very cool uh, company where they were working on upskilling of mm. uh, of talents and uh, of of certain kind and below mm. so she also looks after the training part finance compliances hr uh, uh and um, she look after some of the offline businesses for us did you consciously go out and seek partners um who were going to handle the things that you didn't want to handle or is it uh, something just came about naturally no so ideally whenever you have a vision of something that you want to build mm-hmm. you always need to have complementary skill sets wale partners mm-hmm. right yeah you need to find out people who can plug in the gap and hole mm-hmm. where probably you are not that good at yeah or you will need hands and legs in those directions mm-hmm. right otherwise it's tough and that's why we always say that choose the right co-founders Hmm. because you just cannot uh, do a lot of work and you cannot have an ambitious vision hmm. and fulfill it single handedly if you don't yeah. have right kind of co-founders with you absolutely so it was it was important for me to choose people who are complementary in skill sets i am a very optimistic guy who is not as detail oriented as vivek and nitya are hmm. so they plug in the gap there what would you say are some of the errors you made early on and how did you uh, how quick were you to pivot from it and what was your thinking around that so from a vision perspective we mm-hmm. were very clear wo- of what we were trying to build and mm-hmm. thankfully and we can very proudly say mm-hmm. usually a lot of startups they pivot mm-hmm. it is in the in the first couple of years mm-hmm. but we have never never had to pivot even once from our core goal our ah. vision was always to build a music tech platform mm-hmm. which takes a journey from a of a learner from a learner to a creator to a influencer slash mm-hmm. you know distrib- i mean they, when you start distributing you become an influencer in that sense yeah. um um there are there are lots of mistakes that mm. one makes and those are the mistakes you keep for writing a book <laughs> yeah because mm. uh, some of them are not something that i would like to mention out here uh-huh. but you yeah, have taken a lot of learnings from them mm-hmm. i would have loved for example um i think um, a large part of my tech was outsourced initially hmm. i would have loved to have someone who could have been my tech co-founder from day one mm mm-hmm. and um, but now you have a team yeah i now have a team but yeah. i'm saying since you asked me yeah. i won't say mistake per se but i could have done that faster i could have yeah. had a cto faster mm mm-hmm. um we waited out till mvp was built through partnerships and stuff etc mm-hmm. what do you uh, think um, from your personal and professional life um has helped you do your job right now and found this company on personal front obviously mm-hmm. i am blessed to have a fantastic family mm-hmm. uh, a founder cannot do crazy stuff mm-hmm. suddenly own i to decide to let go of your financial social um you know uh, life right yeah. um uh, and also get drained out emotionally multiple times in the journey mm-hmm. right without the support of your family i have i'm blessed to have a wonderful wife mm-hmm. and uh, my daughter was 9 years old but she is still as involved as <laughs> anyone can be in yeah. in this journey with me she's vested into this whole idea mm-hmm. and they have given me a sort of a free hand to operate she's they are like go conquer as uh, so that's a very important thing because the because the founder's life is very lonely life mm-hmm. you know you keep absorbing a lot of pressure from a lot of your um, colleagues and people who work with you mm-hmm. without letting them know the amount of pain that you go through personally um, that's definitely helped a wonderful bunch of um, members in the family and uh, having good set of advisors slash mentors mm-hmm. and i would love to believe we'll never fail but if mm-hmm. you fail and you invest four years of life mm-hmm. professionally for four years you were stuck at some point mm-hmm. which otherwise if you are 
in an institution right. you would have continued to grow out there hmm. so that's a huge compromise you do hmm. uh, your salaries are never going to be especially someone like me who had the fortune to be at different levels in the industry mm-hmm. i was at a certain yeah. you know compensation package right you can never expect that kind of thing happening even if you are founder running your own show yeah and there are many employees in my company who make more money than i make mm mm-hmm. okay <laughs> so professionally you have to be prepared that come what may you not going to give up Hmm. and it's okay hmm. to let go of a certain status you, that you held by virtue of being part of a large hmm. organization or you were at a certain position out there what was a uh, what was one such thing that you had to pass uh, right before you started this yeah i was at amex before this mm-hmm. my previous company mezzi got acquired by amex express mm. um and i was um, i was uh, director of business development at amex i'm mm-hmm. managing business development for asian market um and very cozy and comfortable job hmm very high paying job in that sense yeah um so uh, and you, you get know, to sleep at night yeah absolutely a peaceful <laughs> sleep you at the end of the month you know for the fact that even if you did bad job of yeah. course you'll get some amount of hearing from your bosses yeah. but at the same mm-hmm. time you know your salaries are going to come into your bank account mm-hmm. at the end of the month right yeah that comfort is absolutely not there you have to shake yourself up you have to be completely out of comfort zone one of my one of my ment- mentors had once mentioned that when you are at the end of your comfort zone Hmm. that's hmm. when the entrepreneurship starts hmm true right so i think um, i think that's a kind of um, compromises you want to make professionally to be able to get to where you want to achieve and that also you don't know i mean a lot of my friends um, when we talk and we meet and they are like um you know you're a founder uh, hmm. why you worried um, they by default they believe that a founder by virtue of having we quit in the company You're yeah. sitting on some piles of mm. cash. Yeah, you're sorted. The valuation is mm. always on paper, mm. right? Okay. If you are a smart guy mm. and if you're looking at starting up a company mm. to make money, you will never do that. Yeah. Because the probability of a startup working fine and succeeding and making money for you is half a percent. Mm. Will any wise man become a founder to make money? Money happens. Mm. you have to get in because like if i had something in my mind now i would invest in 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 situations like, which is probability of yeah. me earning is higher right that are easier ways to easier easier ways to it right yeah. so i always say that if i was saying hmm. i wouldn't do what i'm doing just to make money hmm. this is way beyond it yeah there has to be some kind of madness <clears throat> to build something of this significance hmm. something which is delivering impact music education hmm. i think is a life skill that one must have 70% of our teachers are women teachers hmm. and of them almost 70% are in tier 2 tier 3 cities today hmm. and they're making more money that, than they would have imagined in their lifetime is there a hidden sort of hope that this also ele- elevates the status of teachers absolutely like we have this dream as as founders that we should be able to really deliver an impact hmm. to our teachers community hmm. and they should be able to take a lot of pride in being music teachers hmm. which otherwise as a profession has not been glorified what are the brass tacks of actually elevating that status of music teachers one of the direct ways of evaluation is financial growth hmm right Correct. Yeah. why would you say a doctor is uh, of, apart from the fact that he cures people i know you know for the fact that his doctor is going to make yeah. a lot of money yeah. clearly right yes. so first impact that you deliver is by making sure that financially they are really growing month on month with us hmm right they are growing they are earning enough to have teaching as the only profession and not look at surrogate ways of making money secondly the moment you start doing that lifestyle starts getting elevated yep. that is a reflection to the society that the person is doing really well we have also launched the platform colati originals hmm. to potentially give chance to some of our talented teachers who are really good uh, potential uh, potential uh, artists of future hmm. uh, and if you can create one or two use cases or case studies like that i'll take a lot of pride in that Huh. that you know by virtue of being a teacher with us someone went on to become an artist hmm. of um, an impact hmm. so for for such a person um, what all uh, would you be managing for such a person right from giving them creative assistance hmm. to be able to create something so we have bunch of composers we have onboarded we have bunch of lyric writers we have on- onboarded out there mm-hmm. so it's a collaborative effort i have a team which works on artim originals uh-huh. the whole creation part of the whole thing and uh, then help them build 
something which is very essential for an artist today the whole social media ecosystem mm. like today you might be a very good artist but if you're not on social media yeah. putting out content pieces you're not doing enough of your marketing on social media then or you would have breached that height for you not to be there actually yeah. but any which ways i think mm. you, so assistance around that then grooming them to become performers mm. just because you are a good singer doesn't make you a good performer absolutely there is an art of being a performer mm. so therefore a lot of grooming can go behind that mm. so that is one thing out there we'll do and then enter marketing and creative assistance on on putting out good pieces of content can we get a peek into what kind of contracts would that entail for what kind of contracts it's a it's a typical artist contract that one signs where whatever we co create we mm. co own every um, part of monetization that we will do there's mm. a share plowed back to artist without bringing the draconian ways of no 360 degree deal yeah so there is yeah. 360 degree deal for sure hmm. but that doesn't stop someone to do a deal with someone else by taking an noc mm. right from yeah. our side right like i wouldn't want to be part of i don't want to block someone's growth uh, by saying you know you know there's hmm. there's a draconian law that you just can't go and do anything else hmm. if you're doing but my idea is to deliver everything to those guys hmm. so the whole, the whole agreement that we sign is 360 degree Hmm. but the caveat is if you are a performer i will try and give you performance opportunities hmm. but if you're going and getting somewhere else please go ahead and do it ah so i will take the share of revenue only for the degrees that i'm getting to you no oh. not for the ones that you are not fair uh, okay part of actually hmm. but yes if you start really investing behind this talents hmm. then then you have the right also by the way i'm also saying from a labels perspective or from a hmm. from a from someone who's investing behind a talent yeah that when you are investing on a, on a talent when talent was nowhere hmm right like unfortunately india doesn't have an r process yeah there is no good brown in in the country who picks yeah. up a lady gaga from a strip bar and yeah make makes her what she is today right mm. um we would take pride in doing that okay for uh, the uh, upcoming entrepreneur in the music space uh, if you had to give three points for funding 101 like i said um first get the vision right mm. you know build the scale around it have enough research data back Hmm. to be able to uh, demonstrate the scale scale hmm. um have a very solid execution plan hmm. have a have a hmm. plan if not possible to build immediately a solid team around you hmm uh and get to whatever idea that you built hmm to a to an mvp stage at least hmm to demonstrate what you are trying to achieve hmm. right just an idea is not going to get you anywhere yeah. for sure what is a healthy uh, timeline to get cash flow positive it's a very tough thing to and i mean when you say of course depends, depends on, on the idea yeah depends huh. on the business yeah. right um, a consumer tech space uh, mm. there are there are couple of um, products or, or or platforms which are doing really well mm. but they've taken more than 5 6 7 years to mm. even become cash flow positive mm-hmm. in that sense because it just needs it requires a kind of capital mm. uh, again in music business there are multiple kind of businesses Hmm. So it's tough to say what is the ideal period, hmm. but one should definitely look at a very clear cut path to profitability when someone is making business plan, rather than looking at the rounds of investments as your victories, uh, the yeah. multiples or the scale or the growth that you are driving to the hmm. business, and how fast you are getting to the path to profitability hmm. should be your aim, and it it. it ideally should not be more than 3 years of horizon that you set out for on a scale of 1 to 5 i promised yeah. you 5 but i am still at 2 mm. after 3 years that can't happen mm. so that depends a lot on your execution plan your ability to be able to build a large scale business what according to you should aspiring entrepreneurs in the music space be uh, looking at thinking about and attempting to solve i think um, large part of the problems that we identified uh we are solving we are trying to solve at rtm mm-hmm. um if one needs to really put his head down mm-hmm. um we need to solve for um for the fact that how do you bring in ai mm-hmm. efficiently mm-hmm. in the business of music to complement what's happening yeah and not eradicate what's I happening i think instead of replacing replacing yeah. right i think there are a lot of elements out there like one of the examples that i keep giving is globally we are a 71 billion dollar music market mm. india consumes more music mm. than the world average why are people not willing to pay hmm i think they are willing to pay i think uh, we don't have the mechanism right so that's what i'm saying so figure mm. out a way mm. to be able to deliver um a premium experience which spotify yeah. is trying 
youtube is trying in, yeah. in their own way etc but if someone is to really crack it mm. figure out a way to uh, start making consumers pay for music yeah because that's what netflix and amazon and all did to uh, you know video content yeah someone has to do that with too. music music absolutely if we can really figure out a way to start making consumers pay or for that matter get more and more brands to spend i remember in the early days of um, i mean digital revolution less than 2% of total spends of brands was focused on digital marketing or digital spends mm-hmm. today almost 50% of total spends yeah. by every brand is on digital uh, platforms right yeah huge opportunity why can't music form mm. a very integral part of the brand spend right how can brands leverage music efficiently mm. um to have the same measurable eyeballs or achieve the same sort of kpis that mm. they have in their minds how can music become that medium yeah that's one problem one is to solve for sure mm. so i've just given three four problems <laughs> that i think someone should be able to put their um head yeah. down and do it Thank you so much Ashish for joining us. This episode has been fantastic. It was so much fun uh brainstorming these things with you, getting a founder's perspective on being an entrepreneur in this space. Um uh any parting words? I just believe that um uh, uh music specifically is a large space mm-hmm. and I think it's waiting to explode given the tailwinds that we have around it the consumption pattern the mm. amount of learners consumers uh, one advice that i would give to anyone who is dreaming to be an entrepreneur mm. is that um, there is no right age or time to do this there's to mm. be an extremely compelling reason for you to drop everything and do it there's to be a problem that you solve that you want to solve and you believe is big enough to be solved first of all mm. uh, one of my mentors again said once to me that there is a vitamin and there is a painkiller Hmm. vitamin is good to have pain killers must have hmm. so try and figure out that kind of a problem statement hmm. and then go heads down into that there is no end to opportunities the next 10 years is of india hmm. we are genuinely as a country are gonna be um, the drivers of the growth of world economy and music is very integral part of it hmm.